فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم فصل في الاعتناء بالطلاب وترتيب تقديمهم ويقدم في تعليمهم إذا ازدحموا الأول فالأول فإن رضي الأول بتقديم غيره قدمه وينبغي أن يظهر لهم البشر وطلاقة, وطلاقة الوجه ويتفقد أحوالهم ويسأل عمن غاب منهم فصل في نية طالب العلم قال العلماء ولا يمتنع من تعليم أحد لكونه غير صحيح النية فقد قال سفيان وغيره طلبهم للعلم نية وقالوا طلبنا العلم لغير الله تعالى فابى أن يكون إلا لله معناه كان عاقبته أن صار لله تعالى فصل في آداب المعلم ويصون يديه في حال الإقراء عن العبث وعينيه عن تفريق نظرهما من غير حاجة ويقعد على طهارة مستقبل القبلة ويجلس بوقار ويجلس بوقار وتكون ثيابه بيضا نظيفا نظيفة وإذا وصل إلى موضع جلوسه صلى ركعتين قبل الجلوس سواء كان الموضع مسجدا أو غيره فإن كان مسجدا كان آكد فإنه يكره الجلوس فيه قبل أن يصلي ويجلس متربعا إن شاء أو غير متربع روى أبو بكر بن أبي داود السجستاني بسنده أن عبد الله بن مسعود رضي الله عنه كان كان يقرئ الناس في المسجد جاثيا على ركبتي فصل ومن آدابه المتأكدة وما يعتنى بحفظه أن لا يذل العلم فيذهب إلى مكان ينسب إلى من يتعلم منه ليتعلم منه فيه وإن كان المتعلم خليفة فمن دونه بل يصون العلم عن ذلك كما صانه السلف رضي الله عنهم وحكاياتهم في هذا كثيرة مشهورة فصل في توسيع مجلس العلم وينبغي أن يكون مجلسه واسعا ليتمكن جلساؤه فيه ففي الحديث عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم خير المجالس أوسعها رواه أبو داود في سنني في أوائل كتاب الأدب بإسناد صحيح من رواية أبي مسعود الخضري رضي الله عنه the author here talks about giving importance to this order okay tartib wa taqdeemihim that you actually give consideration and thought towards the order and who comes first the author here says wa yuqaddimu fi ta'limihim the author should give precedence to he should make first في تعليمهم in the teaching إذا ازدحموا الأول فالأول that the first patch come he teaches them first and then the next patch come he teaches them second فإن رضي الأول بتقديم غيره but if the first patch they say we've given our place to the second group that have come then they are entitled to do so then the author says a teacher should also greet his students with cheerfulness and a smile, asking how they are and inquiring about those who are absent. The author here says, وينبغي أن يظهر لهم البشرة وطلاقة الوجه ويتفقد أحوالهم. That the teacher he smiles for his students and he shows them that he's glad and is happy with them, and he also asks about their affairs. How are you? How is the family? Is everyone all right? Are you feeling good today? Are you already energetic for the class today? He does that. He asks, وَيَسْعَلَ عَنْ مَنْ غَابَ مِنْهُ And he also asks, why is so and so absent today? Where is he gone? I haven't seen him today. Is he up to something? So he asks about his students. Not that he's careless about them. Now I ask you guys this question. Who do you see practicing these things today? Nursery teachers, right? 
nursery teachers, when they come, the students come, the kids come, they treat them like kings in this. Yeah? You find that the non Muslims practice these things in teaching in school. They ask the student how he is, and these are things that Nawawi, rahimahullah, Al Imam and Nawawi, rahimahullah, is writing about this for a student, student teacher of the Quran. He's a 7th century scholar, Al Imam Nawawi. He's talking about it then. When the Western went in any civilization whatsoever, you see, he was talking about it then. But they adopted these good characteristics and they took it from us. They now implement it in their lives and they use it. They use it in their lives and they implement it. You see, a teacher is not giving the students his full attention. He's teaching all of them at the same time. When you go to the Quran classes today, you look at the teachers, what do you find? There's no respect. The teachers don't respect the teacher, the teacher doesn't respect the students. There's no, there is nothing like that going on. The students don't even like the class that they're going to, they find it miserable. But that same child is so happy to go to what? He's so happy to go to his nursery or he's so happy to go to his reception. He's so happy to go to year one or year two, year three, right? But he's totally against going to the Quran class. The whole set, the layout of how everything is, is just chaos. Nothing's organized. So with that being said, the idea that a person leaves even when they learn the Qur'an is not respecting the Qur'an. The Qur'an is not really respected, it's not looked up to. Because the teachers are just looked at as savages. Gangsters just want to kill the children whenever they step into the, uh, the, the, the Mal'amad or the Duksi or the Madrasa. Sah. True or false brothers? This all goes against the way that it, the teacher should be towards his students. The teacher should not refuse to teach a student who appears to have an improper, an improper intention. So a student comes up to you and you can see from the student that his intentions are not good. The author says, Rahimahullah, and Imam Nawawi, he says you shouldn't reject him. You shouldn't turn him away and say to him, I'm not going to teach you because I can sense from you, I can smell from you, I can feel from you that you have bad intentions. Your intentions and your motive in wanting to learn is, is not good, so I'm not going to teach you. You shouldn't. Reason why? Sufyan al Tawri and other scholars said regarding their students, their seeking knowledge is in itself an intention. This is an intention. The fact that they've come to you and they're learning itself is an intention. Sufyan al Tawri said, Talabuhum lil ilmi. Their seeking of knowledge, them wanting to gain and attain knowledge itself is an intention in and within itself. They also said, We sought knowledge for other than Allah, but Allah refused that it be for anyone but Him. This means that Allah purified their intentions so that they ultimately sought knowledge for His sake. So here the author Rahimullah says, وَقَالُوا they also said, طَلَبْنَا الْعِلْمَ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى فَأَبَى أَنْ يَكُولَ إِلَّا لِلَّهِ So some of the Salaf are saying this, we went to gain knowledge, to attain knowledge, we did that to sort knowledge, but what were we doing it for? For other than the sake of Allah. We were seeking knowledge for other than the sake of Allah. But then knowledge came and it's refused. It said once it came and it went in our hearts, knowledge just only wanted it to be for whose sake? For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sake. So even if the person's intention is bad and the person is seeking knowledge for other than the sake of Allah, give it time. You will see that same person turn out to uh, go against the evil intention and the evil evil motive that they had. Your intentions will be good. Now, the teacher should be, should prevent himself from fidgeting with his hands while teaching and prevent his eyes from unnecessary wandering. This is also another thing that the author mentions, which is وَيَصُونَ يَدَيْهِ فِي حَالِ الْإِقْتِرَاءِ عَنِ الْعَبَثِ. The teacher should get rid of this idea of playing with a pen like this. Okay. And also the student. A lot of people students, they play with their pens, they uh, click things, all of that, stop it. Don't play with anything in your hand um, uh, at all. Wa and his eyes, what? Uh, and his eyes from unnecessary wandering. The student just keeps looking at the roofs and looking at the ceiling and he's looking at unnecessary things. A student of knowledge, brothers and sisters, what you need to realize is that Every movement for a student of knowledge is a reason. Just like he doesn't waste his time in going to places and chatting with people unnecessarily, he doesn't look at things that don't concern him as well. Are you with me? He doesn't. He's looking 
His movements all have a purpose and a goal behind it. Nothing is just, just done. Some people come to your house and they look at your roof and they say, Oh, did you see that? You're like, wow, I've been living here for the last five to ten years. I've never saw that in my life. How on earth did you see this in my house? This shows that these people are just so unnecessary people. Huh? They pick up things in your house that even you weren't, you weren't concentrated on. Are you there? Brothers, well, it was transmitted from some of the pious predecessors that some of them, their houses collapsed. And they were told, oh, your roof is collapsed. They actually never looked up. They never looked up at their roofs to see. It. And they said, we've been living here for the last years, you know. We've never seen this that you claim. Now. Also, he should sit in a state of purity, having made wudu, facing the Qibla with dignity and solemnity. Okay, when you come to seek knowledge, the person should sit down upon tahara, purity, the wudu. How do you want knowledge to enter your heart, okay, or your, your, into you, when you have, you're not a full pure tahara, so you do wudu. The person that sits with waqar, tranquility, okay, وَتَكُونُ ثِيَابُهُ بَيْضًا نَذِيفًا And also, your clothing is white and it's clean. You wear clean and white is the most beloved color too. To the Messenger alayhi as he said. His garment should be clean and white and he should pray to Rakaq when, whenever he arrives and before he sits down. So when he comes to the place, for example, the Masjid, don't just sit down straight away. Do and uh, pray two units of Raqqa, he says. Uh, whether he's in the Masjid or not. So he says here, w w whether it's m the Masjid or, or not. This issue of not fihi nadar. There's a look to the statement of Nawi here. Because he's sanctioning a legislation. صح? He needs an evidence. Now, when you come to the Masjid, the Prophet said, إِذَا دَخَلَ أَحَدُكُمُ الْمَسْجِدَ فَلَا يَجْلِسَ حَتَّى يُصَلِّيَ رَكْعَتَيْنِ Right? And if one of you enters into the Masjid and comes into the Masjid, he should not sit down or she should not sit down unless they pray two rak'ah. So that's understandable. But to come to the Masjid and... Um, so to come to this person's house, before you do a dars and you pray two rak'ah, this requires a delil. Now, if he is in the mosque, then it is particularly recommended as it is disliked for one to sit down upon entering a masjid without praying two rakahs. It is acceptable for the teacher to sit either cross-legged or in another manner. Here he goes on speaking about It's disliked for him to sit down before he teaches. Okay? He sit, sorry, he sits down before he prays. Before he doesn't sit down. It's disliked for you to just come and sit down without praying. Then the author says, وَيَجْلِسَ مُتَرَبِّعًا That he sits cross-legged. مُتَرَبِّعًا means what? Cross-legged. Insha if he wishes to. Or غَيْرَ مُتَرَبِّعٍ Or even if you don't want to sit down cross-footed. Like, you know, you cross your legs like that. The way you're sitting. It's called مُتَرَبِّعٍ The reason why it's called مُتَرَبِّعٍ is because your hips are two and your knees are two. So it's four. When you cross your legs like that. Abu Bakr ibn Abu Da'ud al-Sigistani narrated that Abdullah ibn Mas'ud used to teach people in a mosque while sitting on his knees. No, so he used to sit on his knees like this. Now you can show us. Yeah, he would teach like that. That's called Jathiya al rukbati He would sit like that. So he would put his, knee, his legs down and his knees. So he would sit on it. That's how Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu used to teach. Among the etiquettes that is particularly important for the teacher to practice is that he honor knowledge and not demean knowledge by going to teach in a place that is attributable to the student, such as the student's home, regardless of whether the student is a leader or a common person. The author here talks about issue of izazul ilm, honoring knowledge. He says, "Women adabi al mutaakidati." From one of the recommended and highly respected matters pertaining to knowledge is the issue of honoring uh, knowledge. For example, the student going to a place where he would teach, for example, a house owned by the student, going to the student's house. He goes, this is not something the teacher should do. Whether that student, whether that student is a khalifa, is a khalifa meaning he's a leader. Are you with me? And anyone below that. 
it does not matter don't take knowledge to the household he, but he's, this is what the author says rather he should preserve knowledge against any such degradation just as the pious predecessors did there are a number of popular stories that illustrate the pious predecessors concern for this particular issue so he says بَلْ يَصُولُ الْعِلْمَ عَنْ ذَلِكَ he should protect knowledge from this just like the Salaf radiallahu ta'ala anhu did and he said their stories regarding this is very famous and it's well not documented it's well known a teacher's teaching area should be spacious in order to make room for his students and so as to act in accordance with the saying of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the best sitting areas are the most spacious uh, are most spacious abu da'ud narrated this hadith in his sunan at the beginning of the book of etiquette with a sound chain of narration by the way of abu sa'id al-qudri the author here talks about the issue of tawsi' majlis al-ilm that the teacher makes sure that this gathering and the circle of knowledge where his students are coming is very big and it's, it's mashallah a spacious place it's not a very thick sorry it's not a very it's not very narrow thin you know small place that is actually a spacious place um, so that the people are able to sit properly and they are able to spread themselves out and he braces it on the hadith of the messenger alayhi salatu salam khayrul majalisi awsa'uha the best of gatherings are the places where it is vast and it's big abu dawood narrated this he said in the beginning of his book the books of the book the book of etiquettes with a chat saying uh, with with a salad which is sahih and on the authority of who abu sa'id al-khudri then the author rahimahullah says faslun fi adab al-muta'allim جميع ما ذكرناه من آداب المعلم في نسي آداب للمتعلم ومن آدابه أن يجتنب الأسباب الشاغلة عن التحصيل إلا سببا لا بد منه للحاجة وينبغي أن يطهر قلبه من الأدناس ليصلح 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 لقبول القرآن وحفظه واستثماره فقد صح عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال ألا, ألا, ألا إن في الجسد مضغة إذا صلحت صلح الجسد كله وإذا فسدت, وإذا فسدت فسد الجسد كله فسد الجسد كله ألا وهي القلب وقد أحسن القائل يطبب يطيب القلب للعلم. The, the way he says the word فسد you can say if you wish to فسد you can say فسد. وقد أحسن القائل يطيب القلب للعلم كما كما تطيب الأرض للزراعة. وينبغي أن يتوضع لمعلمه ويتأدب معه وإن كان أصغر منه سنا وأقل شهرة ونسبا وصلاحا وغير ذلك ويتوضع للعلم بتواضعه للعلم يدركه وقد قالوا العلم حرض للفتى المتعالي كالسيل, كالسيل حرض للمكان العالي وينبغي أن ينقاد لمعلمه ويشاوره في أموره ويقبل قوله كالمريض العاقل قبل كالمريض 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 العاقل يقبل قول الطبيب الناصح الحاذق وهذا أولى فصل في أهمية المعلم واحترام الطالب له ولا يتعلم إلا ممن كملت أهليته ولا يتعلم إلا ممن كملت ولا يتعلم إلا من إلا ممن كملت. so you can say three ways. you can say كملت. you can say كملت. you can say كملت. وظهرت ديانته وتحققت معرفته. واشتهرت سيانته فقد قال محمد بن السيرين ومالك بن أنس وغيرهما من السلف هذا الدين دي هذا العلم دين فانظر عمن تأخذون دينكم وعليه أن ينظر معلمه بعين الاحترام ويعتقد كمال أهليته ورجحانه على طبقته فإنه أقرب إلى انتفاع به 
وكان بعض المتقدمين إذا ذهب إلى معلمه تصدق بشيء وقال اللهم استر عيب معلمي عني ولا تذهب بركة علمه مني وقال الربيع صاحب الشافعي رحمه الله تعالى ما اجترأت أن أشرب الماء والشافعي ينظر إلي هيبة له وروينا عن أمير المؤمنين علي بن أبي طالب رضي الله عنه قال من حق العالم عليك أن تسلم على الناس عامة وتخصه دونهم بالتحية وأن تجلس أمامه وتشي وتشي وتشيرن عنده بيدك ولا تغمزن بعينك ولا تقولن قال فلان خلافا لقوله ولا تغتابن عنده أحدا ولا تساور في مجلسه ولا تأخذ بثوبه ولا تلح عليه إذا كسل ولا تعرض أي لا تشبع من طول صحبته وينبغي أن يتأدب بهذه الخصال التي أرشد إليها علي كرم الله وجهه وأن يرد غيبة شيخه إن قدر إن قدر فإن تعذر عليه ردها فارق ذلك المجلس Section Manners of the Student of Knowledge. It is important to note that everything we have mentioned of the manners required of teachers is, a, is applicable to that which is required of the students as well. Among the manners required of the students is that they avoid anything that may distract them from attaining knowledge, except that which they necessarily need. The author here, Rahimullah, he says now he's, he spoke, now he's finished speaking about the etiquettes that the teacher needs to come with. Now he's going to speak about the etiquettes that the student of knowledge requires and that the student of knowledge should have. So the Sheikh says, ma min adab al fi nafsi adabun lil All the manners that we mentioned for the teacher are also the same for the student of knowledge. All of them. And then he goes on saying, but there are some etiquettes, but there are some etiquettes, and there, but there are some etiquettes and some manners that the student needs to come with. And from those etiquettes is al asbab al tahsil. The things that are going to busy him from attaining knowledge, he needs to stay away from. Illa sabab la budda minhu hajah. Unless it's something that he needs to do, he has to do. Other than that, he does not really busy himself with anything other than seeking knowledge. In other words, he dismisses every single thing there is when he's seeking knowledge. He doesn't associate partners with the knowledge. Okay, he, he does Tawheed in knowledge, he only does it by itself. Okay, and everything else he dismisses it. Unless he says, Illa sababan la budda minhu lil haja. Unless for, if it's something that he has to do, there's a need for it. No. A student must cleanse his heart of impurity so that it may be suitable for taking in the Quran, memorizing it and benefiting from it. The author then here says, وَيَنْبَغِ أَنْ يُطَهِرَ قَلْبَهُ مِنَ الْأَدْنَاسِ the student of knowledge should purify his heart sorry, from any filth or any uh, dirt from his heart. The student needs to clean, cleanse his heart from this. لِيَصْلَحَ So he can become, uh, so he becomes good and prepared and ready لِقَبُولِ الْقُرْآنِ to accept the Qur'an. وَحِفْظِهِ وَاسْتِثْمَانِ Your heart has to be clean and pure from any filth, any illnesses for, it, for the Qur'an there to enter your heart. And we spoke about this when we were teaching ta'zim al-ilm, glorifying knowledge and venerating knowledge. That if you want to drink from a cup, you want to drink a nice, nice honey from a cup, okay? You want, to eat, you want to drink honey. What you first need to do is you need to take out every dirt and filth that's in the, that's in the cup, okay? You need to, you have to, or else you're not going to taste the honey anymore. And the taste of the honey is going to die out from you. And the heart, brothers and sisters, it, it affects from two, two the illnesses is what it encounters. Marad al-shubuhat and marad al-shahwat. Marad al-shubuhat means the illnesses of doubts. Sorry, desires. Shubuhat means doubt. The illnesses of doubts. And the second one is the illnesses of shahwat, desires. 
So you need to cleanse your heart from both of them. Once you've cleansed your heart from those two, your heart is clean. It's a cup that's ready, freshly washed. Now you can pour whatever you want in there. Now you can what? You can pour whatever you want in there. Okay? So that's the same with uh, ilm. The heart needs to be cleansed. You can pour every knowledge that you want in there. And the Quran is then ready to accept. The heart is ready to accept the Quran. So you can memorize it and you can benefit from it. And the author says, the Prophet ﷺ said in an authentic hadith, Verily, there is a morsel of flesh in the body that is rectified. The entire body will be rectified. Meaning, it will be, it will be a cause of rectification for the body. And if it is corrupted, the whole body will be corrupted. Verily, it is the heart. The author, the, the author brings the hadith of the Messenger ﷺ. This hadith is in Sahihain, Bukhari, Muslim, and Hadith in Umar ibn Bashir. That the Messenger said, Allah, Verily, in the body of the human, there is a morsel, a piece of meat. If this, mos, if this morsel becomes upright, steadfast, perfect, or good, and cleansed, and looked after, then the whole of the body will. And if this morsel becomes corrupt, then the whole of the body will be corrupt. Then the Prophet said, This morsel is the heart. The heart is the king of the body. If the body is in line, so if the heart is in perfection, if the heart is being cared for, if the heart is being protected, then your body will follow. But if your heart is filthy and your heart is dirty and your heart goes against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if your heart goes against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then what you need to realize is that then your body will do the same. Then the author brings the statement of and excellent are the words of he who once stated, the heart needs to be prepared for knowledge, just as the earth needs to be prepared, prepared for cultivation. The author here brings the statement of Knowledge, before it enters the heart, it needs the heart to be prepared. It needs the heart to be cleansed. It needs the, it needs the heart to be, you know, uh, prepped for the occurrence, for the coming of the, uh, because for the coming of knowledge. Just like the earth, it needs preparation, it needs to be worked on the earth before you are able to place the seeds and plants, the uh, fruits in there. Now, the student should humble himself before his teacher and treat him with respect, even if his teacher is younger than him. Or Here, this is important. The author says, وَيَنْبَغِي It is needed, it is necessary. لِمُعَلِّمِ That this individual Humbles the student, humbles himself for his teacher, humbles himself for his teacher, and he has good manners with his teacher. Even if the teacher is, even if you are younger, the teacher is younger than you, even if your teacher is younger than you and you're older than him, you need to respect him, you need to humble yourself in front of him, and you have to have good manners with this individual because. He's the person who you learned the religion of Allah through. You learned the deen of Allah from. Now, Even if his teacher is younger than him, or less well known than him, or of, of, or of less lim lesser lineage than him, or is less pious than he is. Even if your teacher is less pious than you, you're more pious than your teacher, or you're more famous than your teacher, or even if you believe that your teacher, you have a better lineage, you're from a more stronger background, all of that doesn't. He's a teacher, he taught you the deen of Allah. He taught you what? He taught you the religion of Allah. He taught you the book of Allah. He taught you ilm, knowledge that you're carrying today. And we took this line before. إِذَا أَفَادَكَ إِنسَانٌ بِفَائِدَةٍ مِنَ الْعُلُومِ فَأَدْمِنْ شُكْرَهُ أَبَدًا وَقُلْ فُلَانٌ جَزَاهُ اللَّهُ صَالِحَةً أَفَادَنِيهَا وَأَلْقِ الْكِبْرَ وَالْحَسَدَ If a person benefits you a benefit and gives you knowledge, إِذَا أَفَادَكَ إِنسَانٌ بِفَائِدَةٍ مِنَ الْعُلُومِ Knowledges, he taught you sciences. You took something from him. مِنَ الْعُلُومِ فَأَدْمِنْ Some of the riwayat says فَأَكْثِرْ Increase in فَأَكْثِرْ شُكْرَهُ أَبَدًا Increase in praising him, showing gratitude towards him. فَأَكْثِرْ شُكْرَهُ أَبَدًا وَقُلْ أَنْ سَيْ فُلَانُ So and so جزاه الله صالحة أو الله رموا دم وذكره أو الله أنا دم فلان جزاه الله صالحة أفادنيها He benefited me. He educated me, he taught me. Get rid of this arrogance and this envy that you have in you. Get rid of it. 
This person taught you. The poet, he said, أُعَلِّمُهُ الرِّمَايَةَ فِي كُلِّ يَوْمٍ فَلَمَّا اشْتَدَّ السَّاعِدُهُ رَمَانِي Every day I teach him archery. Here I am teaching this individual archery and how to use the arrow and the bow. I say, this is how you use it. This is what you do. This is how you lift your hand up. This is the way you do it. I teach him it. And when he first learned how to use the archery, who did he use it against? Ramani, he used it at me. The one who was teaching him. And this is very common amongst people. You benefit them, you teach them for so long. They learn from you, they take knowledge from you. And tomorrow, they become aladdu a'dai. They speak against you, they backbite you, they talk against you. Ya akhi, the ilm I taught you and that which I benefited you with, where did it go? Where did it go? What khair are you waiting for in this dunya if the person who favored you, you, still, you don't remember them? The Messenger Ali salatu wasalam, he said, Man la yashkurillasa la yashkurillah. The one who does not show gratitude to the people does not show gratitude to Allah. This is not just a people or it's not just a person. It's a person who taught you the what? The wahi. He taught you the revelation. He taught you the sunnah. And here you are, you're speaking and you're backbiting and you're talking against them. Then you should not really await in this world prosperity and happiness. Sarahatan. You shouldn't. You should have adab and manners towards that. And the author is going to mention many more things that are that is going to that is needed. No. He should humble himself before his teacher in spite of any of these differences because by humbling himself for the sake of knowledge he will attain it. You need to humble yourself. By humbling yourself you will attain knowledge. A lot of people they study with a teacher for instance then they go they graduate from the University of Medina for instance and they come back and they've learned and they've got now and the teacher he had learned from maybe doesn't have that qualification teacher. or he learns qiraat and he learns sciences of the Quran and he becomes a hafid and he learns more than his teacher and he becomes more famous than his teacher what does he do? he belittles his teacher speaks against his teacher says things about his teacher all of this is what? it is a sign of a person's khirman, wallahi. Allah is going to close off from you doors of khair. Now, Some have said, those of arrogance struggle towards knowledge as water does it in flowing towards higher land. The, the author here, he brings, Knowledge is, a, is in war with the one who thinks high of himself. Can a person who feels that he's high and he sees himself to be something and he's, his nose is up there and he believes he's the one. Can he attain knowledge? No. Just like water can't reach a high place. Can the water come from a lower place and go up? No, it doesn't. So in order for the water to come to that high place, that high place has to come down first and then water can go on it. Knowledge is like that. It doesn't go to a person who thinks high of himself. He won't attain it. He won't get it. And that's the reality of so much people. The student must listen to and obey his teacher while seeking his advice in his affairs and accept his advice as a sensible patient seeks the advice of a proficient and skilled doctor and this will be better for him. The student should submit to his teacher, adhere to his teacher's requests. He should consult him in affairs. He should accept the statement of his teacher. Just like a person who's sick, a smart, ill person. What does he do? He accepts the request and the demands and the prescription of who? At-tabibun nasih al hadiq The doctor who knows this science and he's proficient at it. Are you with me? What would the person do? If a doctor prescribes a medicine for you, what would you do? Yeah? You would take it from him. You wouldn't question the doctor. You say thank you and you would take it out from him. The student of knowledge is like that when it comes to his what? He's like that when it comes to his teacher. He takes it from him. Allah. He takes it from him. And he doesn't speak back against his teacher. Naam. A student should seek to learn only from an individual who is completely qualified, clearly pious, of thorough understanding, and known for abstaining from that which is blameworthy. Then the author Rahimullah talks about وَلَا يَتَعَلَّمُ The person should not take knowledge from إِلَّا مِمَّنْ كَمُّلَ تَهْلِيَتُهُ A person who is proficient in this. He knows it. He knows what he's talking about. You take it from that type of person. وَظَهَرَتْ دِيَانَتُهُ And this person's religion is intact. He's not known for kabair, major sins. Now, 
Like we have to understand every single body will do kifarair. No one's infallible. When the scholars they say Zaharat Diyanatu, his religion is apparent, every teacher will do minor sins. But here we're talking about major sins. Now Muhammad ibn Sirin, Malik ibn Malik ibn Anas, and others from among the pious predecessors have said that knowledge is the religion itself. So be cautious as to whom you take your religion from. So the the religion here that the author is talking about, he narrowed it down to a particular form, though. But also the other one is in there as well. So the person you're taking knowledge from, first of all, Dahara Diyanatu. His religion is apparent, so he's away from major sins. And also, he's away from innovation. You don't take a knowledge from a person who's an innovator. No, you don't. The author here says it to you. You don't take knowledge from an innovator. You do not take knowledge from a person of innovation. The reason he says is because Muhammad ibn Sirin and Malik ibn Anasin Both of them said, but it's really famous from Muhammad ibn Sirin. They both said, This knowledge is your religion. Look at who you take your religion from. Look, look who you take your religion from. So this religion, your knowledge is your religion. This is ilm you're learning, right? Look at who you take your knowledge from. Don't take it from every misguided, corrupted person who is calling you to innovation. Stay away from them. Why are you going to take it from them? Because he's lying about Allah. The innovator, يتقول على Allah. He's lying about Allah. He's lying about the religion of Allah. You don't take knowledge from that person. إِذِ الْفَتَى حَسْبَ اَعْتِقَادِهِ رُفِعْ وَكُلُّ مَا لَمْ يَنْتَفِعْ وَكُلُّ مَا لَمْ يَنْتَفِعْ إِذِ الْفَتَى حَسْبَ اَعْتِقَادِهِ رُفِعْ وَكُلُّ مَا لَمْ يَنْتَفِعْ وَكُلُّ مَا لَمْ يَرْتَفِعْ لَمْ يَنْتَفِعْ That the student of knowledge will only benefit from a person who he is able to. Pay attention, and even uh, Imam Nawi is going to mention this over here, which is that if your teacher is an innovator, and you're saying, I know he's an innovator, but I'm still going to take knowledge from him. Are you going to take knowledge with him open-hearted? Are you going to open up to him? Because that's the job of a teacher. You need to open up to your teacher. As we said before, that the teacher can maneuver you and tell you what to do. You need to follow everything he says, right? So if you're saying he's an innovator, I'm going to learn knowledge from him, one eye open. I'm just going to make sure he doesn't slip anything in. Are you opening up to your teacher the way you should? Are you? No, you're not. And that goes against the essence of what a teacher is. A teacher is meant to be somebody who can tell you what... And you are here listening to him and taking his, taking his uh, request and his demands. And he's going to mention that right now here. The student must respect his teacher and believe in his capability to teach. And that he is better than his peers. As this is something you have to know. The student should look at his teacher with an eye of respect. He respects his teacher. 